I would like to thank our health partners. So for those who were involved in HIP 613 2017, uh, it was our pleasure then and we're so excited to be working with the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, uh, OCTC, so CHEO OCTC, and to welcome a new partner uh, this year, a new health partner with the Ottawa, uh, the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. Um, so you will be hearing from both of them later tonight. And a big thank you as well to Shopify for hosting us in this beautiful space. Um, if you, again, our hackathon was here last year and uh, we're just really excited to be here again. So thanks very much. We are also connected to a global network. And so Hacking Health has chapters all across the country and the globe. Heidi, our chapter founder, will tell you all about that. So these national sponsors are also very important to supporting that network, which is really a strong, um, vibrant community that all of the chapters rely on. And so we have Gold Sponsor with Desjardins, who've been involved with us for a long time. Hacking Health's national medical partner is Juul, so we're super excited that they're uh, working with us again. We worked with them at the local level here last year. Uh, our silver sponsors are Merck, Faskin, and Mark Sino. And our national bronze sponsor is OVH. So all of this would not be possible without all of the support of our sponsors and our partners. Ignore the times in this agenda. Um, but in general, this will be the flow of events. So I'm going to be uh, welcoming Heidi, uh, Heidi Thanda, who is the founder of the Hacking Health Ottawa chapter. She is our rock. She is our, she's our visionary. She, she's awesome. So we're super excited. She'll give you the Hacking Health spiel for those that are new. And if you're not, well, you know, a little refresher. And then we will be hearing from Alex Munter, uh, President and CEO of CHEO OCTC. Dr. Liu has called me, he is on his way, so um, you will be hearing from him at some point this evening. Not quite sure when, big suspense. Um, and then we have a panel that will be facilitated by uh, Emma Craig, and she was a past judge here uh, with us last year and works at Shopify as a senior uh, user experience design uh, researcher, sorry. Um, so. I'm going to stop talking now, and I will hand it over to Heidi. Thank you, Kevin. This is so incredible. Thank you all for coming out during the snowmageddon. So before I begin, I just want to say, they say that history is made by those who show up. History is made by those who show up. And as I look over the crowd today, I see a room full of purpose-driven, passionate people that all want to make a change in healthcare for the better. This is how things change. This is how it happens. People like us gather in a room like this, and we create the future. So let's get to it. A quick show of hands of those in the room who haven't heard of Hacking Health. All right. So Hacking Health is a global nonprofit that was founded in Montreal in 2018. I'm 2012, um, And we quickly grew to become a global movement. We are now in 55 cities across the world. We are a community of problem solvers that range from healthcare professionals, designers, patients, developers, and people like you, because we all have a stake in healthcare. And we are powered by a team of engaged citizens that are all wearing red t-shirts, there are volunteers. So this movement is 100% volunteer run, which is amazing. Can we please get a huge round of applause for all of our volunteers? <laughs> it's really their dedication and energy that makes this possible. We love building cross-sector relationships. So Kahin, who spoke earlier, is our partnership and sponsorship lead. Please make friends with her, she's amazing. And 
This, we know that in order to get stuff done in healthcare, we need a lot of strong relationships. So that crosses private, public, nonprofit. We need everyone. And our mission is very simple. We aim to bring the promise of technology to healthcare in order to improve people's lives. It's been a year since we launched the Health Innovation Program with our founding clinical partner, CHEO, the Ottawa Children's Treatment Centre. And in just one year, we've fostered the development of 70 projects, 13 prototypes, and you'll get to hear about two of our pilots that are currently being piloted at CHEO, which is very, very exciting. There are so many success stories that you'll get to hear about this evening, and they should be celebrated. But before we go any further, I'd like to share a story about failure because our failures are most often the stepping stones to our success. In 2004, in 2014, I was part of an R&D fertility project and our goal was to improve in vitro outcomes for patients. In plain English, we were trying to help people have babies. And to make this happen, we spent 18 months designing an intervention. So we brought together the top experts in the field we read through the latest literature, we put all the data together until we were ready to launch our intervention. We launched a feasibility pilot and the program failed, miserably. It turned out that we didn't identify the right stakeholders from the beginning, so they weren't sitting at the table when we were identifying the problem. We also failed in our approach. We, need some, we needed something that was less costly, that was quick, but still systematic. One that was connected to a diverse network that encouraged early experimentation in a low-risk environment. We needed the right mix of academic, clinical, and private partnerships to help us get our idea off the ground. And this is why the Health Innovation Program was built and born on these principles. If there had been a program like this around that time, my story might have looked a little bit different. And so the Health Innovation Program is a series of eight events, and we focus on problem identification, early ideation, uh, the development of interdisciplinary teams so that we can help you get your idea off the ground. Through this program, we actually build prototypes so that they can be tested in clinical settings and actually have a chance to transform an aspect of healthcare delivery. So success in this approach is largely due because of our clinical partners like CHEO, the Ottawa Children's Treatment Centre. And so we're happy to have them here again for the second year and also welcome the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. So I want you to remember throughout this evening that yes, we all come here from different backgrounds, but we're all united with one vision and that's to make some aspect of healthcare better. So I want you to make some friends tonight give some fist bumps, shake some hands, share your ideas, because these are your people. These are the people that are going to help you get your idea off the ground. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, thank you, Heidi. Um, I would now, so Dr. Lou still isn't here. That's okay, we're going to keep going. Um, I would like to invite Alex Munter, President and CEO of CHEO OCTC, to the stage. Thank you. Thank you to, you. Thank you to both of you. And, and let's hear it for Heidi, who is such an incredible leader and champion uh, for Hacking Health. And who is really largely responsible for having gathered us here uh, a year ago, almost a year ago, for a very, very exciting uh, couple of days that are actually gonna change care and make life better for kids who are at CHEO and their families. And it's been a busy year for us uh, at, uh, at CHEO. So since uh, I was last, last here, we have become uh, in the top 10 Canadian hospitals for the digitization of our clinical enterprise. 
So let me just be clear about that. I don't mean like the top 10%. I mean the actual top 10 of 1,400 hospitals. We're in the top 1% of hospitals in Canada for having digitized our clinical enterprise. And we're probably gonna be in the top three or four by the end of this year as we fix up and conclude on a couple of odds and ends. That's uh, significant. <laughs> So if any of the people from CHEO are here look tired to you, you can understand why that is. But it's significant, it's significant immediately because the moment that happened, uh, quality and safety improved, efficiency got better, connectedness of care got better. But in the long term, that's what's really, really exciting because whether it is expanding the horizons of research or creating an opportunity and I'll talk about one in a, a moment that actually is, is about to launch, creating opportunities for uh, innovation. It really does put potential in the hands of all of you and all of our people to think about new ways uh, to solve old problems. Last year uh, at CHEO, we had 1,800 improvements. So that's 1,800 different ways things got better, some of them major and transformational, some of them small and incremental, but all of them growing out of a culture that seeks to encourage staff, physicians, volunteers, patients, families to come forward with ideas, to bring forward ideas and try to make things better. Because our thesis is that it's not people like me who know where the improvement opportunities are. It's the people who are on the front line, who are doing the work, who can see where the gaps are, who can see where the problems are, and who have ideas and just need a bit of help to turn those ideas into change. And that's in fact what happened at the hackathon last year. We had two innovations, uh, that uh, one of which uh, is on the verge of actually going into operation uh, at the hospital, uh, and the other not far behind. And so, what is the thing that people hate most about going to the hospital? Let's have a guess, other than, you know, being sick. But uh, what's, waiting, waiting, absolutely right. And not knowing how long you're gonna wait. And so a very clever surgeon, with the support uh, of the hackathon here last year, developed an app, built off our Epic platform, which is our electronic health record, that will now be able to tell people in the clinic how much longer they're gonna, they're gonna have to wait so that they can leave and come back. Um, they don't have to sit there uh, and wait or they can, they can go somewhere else and, and fill their time, particularly if they're with a child. Uh, if, you do, if you think you don't like waiting, um, just think about it from a child's perspective. Uh, so this will make a huge difference in patient experience at GEO, and it came out of HIP613 uh, and the hackathon. Now, if somebody can find an uh, innovation to uh, fix the second most irritating thing for people to be going to hospitals, which is parking, uh, we're certainly open, open to offers. The other innovation uh, that uh, worked its way through uh, last year at the hackathon uh, related to sleep apnea and one of our, another one of our surgeons, Dr. Uh, Matt Bromwich, developing tools that really will help families uh, begin to attend to and provide support for their kids that are suffering from sleep apnea before they come to hospital and really have a running head start in the development of a treatment plan. Matt couldn't be here today in part because he's been traveling a lot, including going to New York City uh, to deliver a TED Talk. So we're very, very proud uh, of, uh, of his leadership. And of course, we're very proud of all of you. We're proud of our partnership uh, with Hacking Health Ottawa. Appreciate the uh, sponsorship uh, and enthusiasm of Shopify, IBM, uh, Juul, uh, and look forward to continuing to work with you. I'm hopeful that when I'm here next year, it's kind of presumptuous, if I'm invited to come back next year, um, I can tell you about a different project, which is called One Door for Care. You can go, on, uh, you can go online, hashtag One Door for Care. We're this close uh, to getting uh, money from the provincial government to build a 
a treatment hub for kids with special needs uh, and mental health challenges so that we can stop spending money on rent, fumigation, and extra security in the variety of facilities that we currently need to use, redirect that money to frontline care. Now, here's why I'm talking about that here. It's gonna be a brand new building. It's gonna be a building for kids with physical and developmental disabilities, with sensory issues, with issues of expression, facing mental health challenges, the opportunity to think differently about building a building and to, and, to, and to engage this community of innovators in that is truly, truly exciting. Now, we, we do need to get the puck in net, which means all of you need to pick up the One Door for Care flyers that are on the way, uh, on the, on, I think they're at the entrance, uh, and help uh, support our campaign. Mitchell here is uh, our uh, ringleader for the campaign, and he can tell you about some of the initiatives we have to build community support. But I'm hopeful, with your help and, and with the support of the provincial government, we can be back to talk about some really exciting innovation opportunities. So thank you again. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, this, is, this is truly a, a great partnership, and I look forward uh, to learning more, uh, as I always do when I come to a HIP 613 event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Always some uh, great things always happening there. I always learn something new when I, I hear Alex speak, so thank you very much. And we are equally excited to be working with you again. I'm fighting with the music. I like this one. Okay. Um, up next, we have, it is my pleasure to announce Dr. Liu from the Heart Institute. If you could come to the stage, Dr. Liu, and join me in welcoming him. He is... Fresh in the door. Thanks so much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. And uh, uh, I'm uh, mainly here uh, because uh, I'm just uh, amazed in terms of the talents that we have in our community. At the same time, you know, have major challenges uh, in terms of uh, providing better health care. And then I heard about uh, the uh, wonderful hackathon that actually uh, took place at the CHIO. And uh, so I'm here tonight is because I'm uh, have the chance to uh, you know uh, meet uh, Alex and uh, get the ideas from uh, him and I'm mainly Chio Envy in terms of uh, the uh, opportunities. So indeed we are very fortunate to in fact uh, have held a digital uh, summit earlier last year and uh, had uh, the uh, team I'm just amazed in terms of the energy and enthusiasm of uh, being able to uh, bring the new ideas and solutions uh, to some of the compelling